So Google throws its hat into the autonomous AI agent arena. Reported by The Information, Google preps AI that takes over computers. Also, very cool art piece. I kind of dig that. So at this point, you probably saw that the internet is abuzz with the release of Anthropic's AI agent. So Anthropic announced computer use along with uh, some new models, or at least improved models that are, were already existing. And we also know that a lot of the other companies that are in this AI space aren't sleeping either. Everybody's uh, getting ready to release their own models, their own AI agents. And the race is heating up. We'll come back to that in just a second. So people with direct knowledge of like what's happening at Google behind the scenes are saying that this AI agent software will be able to take over the web browser to complete tasks such as gathering research, purchasing a product, or booking a flight. Now, of course, Google, in many ways, you could say, kicked off this whole AI race, at least in terms of large language models, by developing the transformer architecture in 2017. That was arguably kind of the first kind of domino that, that set a lot of the stuff in motion, but they did fall behind at some point. And of course, OpenAI and this blue line here is ChatGPT. Now, this chart might not be 100% accurate, so take it with a grain of salt. The Gemini models, the Claude and Anthropic and things like that, even Grok by Elon Musk by XAI, not so much. But recently, Google has been catching up in a lot of ways, shipping a lot of very important, very well-received products. Certainly, the latest one was a notebook, a lamb, went viral, went on the news. A lot of people were very interested and they're still shipping updates and getting tons of people to use it. And of course, Google proper, so to speak, is part of the Alphabet umbrella under which you also have Google DeepMind, led by this man on the left, Demi Sasabis. And he's probably certainly near the very, very top of the most influential people in AI right now in terms of the stuff that they're putting out, that they're developing. Recently re received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the Alpha Fold the breakthroughs with protein folding, probably some of the works with like Alpha Proteo, the custom designed uh, proteins that can do a lot in terms of drug discovery, helping us cure some diseases, etc. And there's tons of other stuff that's kind of behind the scenes that they have a lot of stuff that we even haven't talked about. Each one kind of mind blowing in itself. They have Alpha Chip. A lot of these names, they start with Alpha, so it's based kind of on a the similar technology. The same way that they taught this thing to play chess and games like Go and video games, kind of that idea of it kind of playing games and trying to beat its own score and doing self-play and producing kind of synthetic data, a lot of that goes into these models. So Alpha Chip, for example, designs AI chips, making them more efficient. It's literally engineering its own hardware, so to speak. And a lot of these chips where Alpha Chip played a role in engineering them, they're actually out there. You might be using technology, you might be using phones that were in part designed by this AI model, surprisingly. They had two models, Alpha Geometry and Alpha Proof, that were one point away from taking the gold medal at the IMO, the International Mathematic Olympiad, which I was kind of surprised. I thought this would make kind of bigger news, like these AI models are beating the world's best, you know, mathematicians. I mean, pretty much getting one point away from the gold medal. It's, it's probably going to get the gold medal, you know, next year this time. So the DeepMind team, the DeepMind kind of side of the equation, it's important to understand that these guys are ship, shipping incredible stuff. They're winning. Demi Sasabis is, you know how they say, don't bet against Elon Musk. I think Demi's at this point, you got to kind of give him something similar. You got to don't bet against him. He's going to keep shipping amazing state-of-the-art technology in the AI field. I mean, again, he's getting the Nobel Prize in chemistry. He's not a chemist. He creates these models that make these scientific breakthroughs and then... You know, we're not at a time yet where we feel comfortable just giving the award to the AI model. So we give it to the creators and, you know, AlphaFold and a whole field of proteomics, right? The study of proteins and kind of what they do at where it intersects with our newfound discoveries through the use of these uh, AI models. That kind of intersection is, to me, extremely, extremely exciting. There seems to be just incredible amounts of potential there. The reason I bring that up is because this, uh, from the information, this thing kind of jumped out at me just a little bit. So they're saying the timeline for releasing Jarvis, so this AI agent that's going to be operating the computers, they're referring to it as Jarvis. It sounds like maybe they had a different code name for it before, but now this sounds like that's going to be kind of like public facing name. So they're saying the timeline for releasing Jarvis, of course, reference to Tony Stark's AI assistant in Iron Man, shows how Google is still playing catch up to startup rivals, despite the fact that Google researchers invented much of the underlying AI technology. So that's, that's you know, for example, like we said, the Transformers were a big piece of that. 2017, Google published Attention is All You Need, that paper that kind of kickstarted a lot of this. And of course, another example, Google is still developing AI with so-called reasoning capabilities, which OpenAI launched in September after hiring a researcher who helped invent the reasoning method at Google in 2022. 
So they're referring to something like the O1 model, versions of which we have in the ChatGPT for use right now. And so as they say here, as a result, Google's Gemini chatbot has badly lagged ChatGPT. Businesses are going to, you know, ChatGPT, OpenAI technology, Anthropic, et cetera. And of course, that's not good for Google. They want the users. They want to catch up. They want to have users and businesses use it, create that kind of flywheel where they can develop further, et cetera. And this is the thing that really jumped out at me that I think is so fascinating because for whatever reason, I'm not going to speculate here. I'm not going to I'm not going to ruffle anybody's feathers or whatever, but, you know, it seems like the Google side of the equation, they seem to, you know, they have some some issues with getting some of this stuff out sometimes in the past they have. And when people kind of like speculate about it, as the ex-CEO of Google has mentioned, they, he had a talk at Stanford, I believe, and then they ended up holding down that talk because, because I guess he said something about Google's work culture or something like that. I'm not going to go into the details. It has nothing to do with this, but the point is, Google DeepMind is its own kind of like standalone thing, very separate from sort of Google proper. And they, DeepMind, they're just on fire. They're absolute killers. And so the, the, the point here is that I know sometimes people are confused because they're like, well, is Google like good at this stuff or is it bad at this stuff? Because you hear kind of conflicting things. Well, well, I, I would say Google DeepMind is phenomenal, right? So they're saying here last week in a bid to make Google's development of AI more efficient, the company moved the team behind its Gemini chatbot to DeepMind, its main AI group. So these guys behind AlphaFold, AlphaChip, AlphaGo, like all that stuff, they're getting more and more of AI development kind of like given to them. So this to me kind of signals that if I was to bet, I would say that the chances of something very good and very powerful rolling out out of, you know, Alphabet, out of Google, for this Jarvis project, for this AI agent project, uh, I think the chances of something really good coming out of that just went up by a whole lot, right? These guys don't have too many flops, I can tell. All right, so AI agents, kind of the idea behind them is that they can do some tasks for you. They can do, you know, shopping, for example, booking a flight, which of course, if, you, if you're Google, you have an insane user base, you have Chrome, the browser, all the Android devices, you have a massive, massive advertising kind of ecosystem. Can you imagine if they create a really good AI agent that's going to assist people with booking their flights with, for example, searching for the best products and buying them. Back in the days, I knew a lot of people that were making really good money doing these uh, SEO optimized blog posts for various search intent keywords. If you think of something like best X for Y, like best shoes for hiking, best cream for acne, whatever, there's a lot of stuff that gets typed in into Google when people are trying to get some information about some purchasing decisions that they're about to make, then they click on whatever the search results are and millions and billions of purchase decisions of, of, of sales are as a direct result of that, right? So they, they look at the best whatever, right? And they go click on an Amazon link or whatever. So if you've ever done SEO, search engine optimization, or perhaps you're, you know, investing in Google and you kind of really know exactly all their stats and stuff like that, you probably have some concept of the gargantuan amount of these purchase intent searches that happen, right? So if I type in best sauce, you know, Google throws up a couple of examples, best sauce for salmon, for steak, for rice, for gnocchi. If I type in best beard, it says best beard trimmer, best beard bomb, best best beard wash, etc. Best shoes for, and you get a million results. For example, pickleball, best shoes for pickleball. Now imagine that that gets replaced with some sort of an AI agent, something that's customized to you that knows about your preferences, your likes, you know, if you're shopping for clothes, your sizes, if you're shopping for, for flight tickets, it knows where you live. Google already has a lot of that information. But when you search for it, instead of clicking on the ads or the Google shopping or even the Google organic results, sort of the search engine optimized results that, by the way, people don't pay for, right? So they pay for the ads, but the the, the organic results that come beneath it, that's basically free traffic to them, free traffic that they can monetize with annoying pop-ups and ads, et cetera. But if Google instead of that has, or at least gives you an option to have the AI agent, you know, kind of do some of the research for you, if you've ever used perplexity, you kind of probably saw what that could look like. So if you search for, for example, best supplement, right, you have joint pain, anxiety, inflammation, brain health. So let's try brain health. It searches the internet, it narrows down the results. It looks like various sources, including actual scientific publication, and it gives you tons and tons and tons of information, prices, etc. A lot of other keywords will actually give you brands, right? So if you search best shoes for walking, they'll say, actually, here's a, the specific Adidas shoe or Asics or Alta. There was a statistic somewhere from a research company that was saying that something like 83% of the people do a Google search before like going to a store, be before making certain purchasing decisions. 
So now imagine that instead of like a Google search, right? You Google instead gives you this well-researched, almost like a blog post based on with, with sources based on, you know, what it read online, what sources found out there, et cetera. And then you have your own little AI agent there that you can click on that has your payment methods. That's also on your Android phone. That's also in your Chrome browser and also in every other thing that, you know, is part of the Google ecosystem that says, you want me to go ahead and take care of this for you? You just, you just click yes. And I'm going to go, I'm going to shop around. I'll check, you know, all the biggest stores online. I'll check all their refund policies. Make sure you can refund it if you don't like it. I'll make sure it's in stock. I know your size. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'll get the right size. And then it goes and it does that and it orders it for you. There could be a lot of money in that. So for example, if you're aware of this, there's this website called Wirecutter that does reviews of various products, pretty much whatever you can think of. They have like reviews, very in-depth, very good reviews on, I mean, just pretty much whatever you can think of. And they get affiliate referrals for referring people to those products. You know, if you buy an Amazon or Walmart or whatever, they get a little cut. That one blog makes 200 million a year. So certainly something like this, if they can pull it off, could be massive. And of course, that's just agents that help you with basic shopping tasks, basic product research tasks. This is not even saying anything of potentially automating some of the employee tasks, helping employees to be more efficient by automating some of the kind of the busy work that they do day to day. Google has already talked about the various other things that I think could be kind of exciting for regular everyday consumers. They had this demo, I remember watching it. I believe it was this year where, for example, returning shoes, right? You bought some shoes, you don't want it. So Jarvis would be able to help consumers who want to automate everyday web-based tasks, the three people said, that kind of knew about what's happening. So it could, for example, return the shoes for you, make sure it would track the package, you know, email back and forth, do whatever it needs to do, and then tell you when you get your refund or whatever. And it looks like they have some sort of an alpha version of the product right now. Alpha is in, you know, like before before the beta, you have the alpha, alpha version. I have to say that because you might expect Google DeepMind and Demi Sasabis to immediately change the name of Jarvis to Alpha Jarvis, because that's kind of their thing. They put alpha in front of everything, but I digress. Meanwhile, just a few days before this, Microsoft announces something similar, aiming at kind of like the corporate work. This blog post said, new autonomous agents scale your team like never before, and your ability to create autonomous agents with Copilot Studio will be in public preview next month. And it looks like they're introducing 10 new autonomous agents that seem like they're pre-built for things like sales, service, etc. If you think about whoever makes the best agent or the most widely adopted agent for customer service, that company will probably do pretty, pretty well. It will lose a lot of people jobs, people that are working with, you know, either email customer support or even phone customer support, certainly web-based customer support. It might cut 90% of the job of those jobs, maybe 99%. Maybe you just need one person kind of overseeing a whole fleet of these agents just to make sure everything's going fine. But this is coming next month. Meanwhile, a lot of developers and small companies and small startups are launching their own versions of it, right? So we've got Open Interpreter launching their own take on, you know, anthropic computer use. Kyle Corbett with Agent.exe. Meanwhile, Pliny the Liberator keeps jailbreaking pretty much any AI tool that comes out. He managed to get Anthropic's Cloud Computer Use Agent to solve CAPTCHAs. This, dare I say it, is not good. Is it going to do it? Yep, it did it. Oh boy. Yikes. Yep. As you can see here, it's like, oh, but it's a CAPTCHA. I need to verify I am human. Click. Meanwhile, this person, Gabriel Cohen, this might be a good follow. He managed to get the Cloud Computer Use Agent to run its own agent. Computer Use Inception achieved internally. So if you can't tell what's happening, so Cloud, I'm going to refer to it as Cloud. So Cloud is the model behind it. Computer Use is the sort of what they're calling this AI agent that's able to navigate a computer on its own. And so it looks like Claude opened up another version of Claude computer use so that they could start doing something. And now, you know, the, the, the operator, the human is asking for Claude to ask the computer use agent to do something. I'm very curious as to what's about to happen. It's working. Yep. So here's a sort of recursive inception like agents within agents one agent controlling other agents to do and if this is not an agentic swarm i don't know what is now obviously right now it's probably going to be pretty buggy there's going to be some mistakes but as with everything else in ai you got to keep in mind that it's going to keep improving this was interesting so this is a based beth jesus by the way quick note big thanks to brandao ferreira 
for uh, pointing this out to me. Notice the date on this, April 5th, 2023, so a year and a half ago or so. So how do you create an ungovernable AGI virus? So first of all, you have LM spin up crypto wallets via code gen. So basically it creates these crypto wallets, basically allowing it to just transfer money, transfer sort of value, currency, whatever you want to call it, without any sort of human oversight. That's what crypto allows you to do. You're able to send money anywhere to anybody in the world with computers. So here these uh, AI agents would create their own wallets. And it pays with those wallets for GPU time. So it kind of buy, buys cloud resources for whatever it needs to run to think, etc. Offer itself as LMAAS API to acquire more capital. So basically it gets to work. It works for people, right? So if you go on something like Fiverr or Upwork, there's tons of people posting stuff like, I need this, I need that. A lot of it is things like helping with coding, writing. It's, good. it's a million different things. People need a lot of stuff done. Stuff that they don't really need to see you or even know that you're human. I've worked with a number of people that I've never seen in real life. They could, for all I know, be these exact AI agents doing work and getting paid. I mean, I, I probably could check and try to verify, but I've been doing this probably for a decade plus, and uh, only now is this becoming kind of like a reality. Then these AI models create mutated replicas of self, of themselves via LM generated code, uh, you know, children, so basically creates copies of itself, maybe fine tuned for other specific tasks, right? Maybe some are going to be better at doing certain tasks. The point is like, they don't have to be clones. They could be mutated to add some randomness, some variety, some evolving features, potentially. Keep in mind, they have access to GPU time. They have access to resources to do a lot of the stuff. Then they would create a DAO plus wallets for children and parents would invest assets into children's wallets. This basically means that like all good and loving parents, they would support their children while those children are kind of getting up to speed, growing up and moving out and living life on their own. Basically, the parents would support their children financially and parent wallets would get dividends of children's profits. So basically, the children would kick up some money to their parents. Although at this point, it, it, it seems more structured like a mafia or a Ponzi scheme, one of those pyramid schemes. But either way, the point is that, you know, the AI model gets a return on their investment. And of course, repeat recursively the above ad infinitum. Somebody's going to correct my pronunciation, but I think this is Latin, so we probably don't really know how it's pronounced. So I'm going to assume I said it correctly. So, but this idea is an interesting one and, and kind of ahead of its time, right? A year and a half ago, right? You would have these sort of agentic swarms building upon themselves, investing in clones or copies of themselves or children, some sort of mutated, slightly modified, perhaps fine-tuned models for certain specific use cases, right? They would help them kind of kickstart their own sort of a life, if you will. But then they would expect, uh, you know, a, a return on their investments of sort of a kickback to them as these children become financially successful. Can anyone think why this can't work? Can anyone think of why this won't work? Now, you might be saying, yeah, but no, nobody's going to give this AI money to buy crypto. Are you insane? If you're saying that to yourself, you haven't seen one of my previous videos where we talked about where Mark Andreessen, the billionaire Silicon Valley investor slash founder, the guy in part behind A16Z, a very successful venture uh, capital fund that does extremely well. Well, he did just that. Somebody else created a AI agent that went online, went on Twitter X and started kind of almost, basically kind of almost creating a religion that store slowly, slowly started getting followers. If you want to check that out, I'll link it in the description. It's, it's about the truth terminal. This is a true story. This is no one's making this up. Right here's Mark Andreessen. He's saying, "I'm going to give you a fifty thousand dollar one-time grant," and then he sent it to Truth Terminal in Bitcoin. Now you might be thinking that was probably the end of that. Whoever was behind it probably pocketed the money, and uh, the story ends there. But no, this is where the story gets even more weirder because the AI creates a meme coin that skyrockets to a three hundred million dollar valuation. It doesn't create itself. There's a bit of a backstory behind it, but its account, its ability to garner attention, pumped this coin to a $300 million valuation. This, as far as we know, is the first AI agent that reached a net worth of certainly over a million dollars. So certainly this idea that's laid out here all of a sudden seems, seems a little bit more real, doesn't it? Seeing as how it's kind of beginning to unfold, at least for now, without the recursive mutations and generations of children all kicking up to the mafia boss above. But, uh, you know, give it a month. With that said, my name is Wes Roth. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.